Welcome to Electron Online, and here in this example, we're going to show you how to find the potential difference between A and B near a finite line charge. So this line charge uh, has length 2L. The middle point here is directly above where point A and point B are. This is kind of the perpendicular bisector. And so this section here is length L. That section here is length L. And notice that the charge density is just a constant. It's lambda sub naught per unit length. So it's so much charge per unit length. We want to know the potential difference there. So the way to do that is to take a small little element right here, a small little dq. And notice that the dq would be equal to the density. Oop, and I guess it's line density, so I should use uh, lambda sub naught, lambda sub naught, which is the linear density times the distance or the length of that little segment, which is dx. And that would be the amount of charge inside there. And that small amount of charge would contribute to the potential of A. Let's start with point A first, right there. And that, of course, the distance here would be distance R. The distance from there to there, that would be distance A. Let's, A is the distance from the line charge to point A. And then the distance from there to there, let's just simply call it X. And then this would be a small little dx. That means that R is simply equal to the square root of a squared plus x squared and the potential at that location due to the charge dq well we can say that that's a small amount of uh, a v a small amount of potential we'll call it dv because then we're going to add it all up by by summing up all the little dqs affecting the potential at that location so dv is equal to the um, k times dq divided by r. So it's simply k times the charge divided by the distance. That will be the potential at that location. And so then we do it again with the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and we add them all up, which means the total potential, v, would equal all the sum of the little dv's, and we're going to integrate from 0 to l. Now that would only be the contribution of this side of the line charge. If we also want the contribution of that line, that side, we simply have to double it because direction is not important here for potential, only the distance between them. So it doesn't matter where they're located so that this is simply duplicated on the other side, even though it comes in at a different angle. We don't care about the angle. We're simply calculating the potential, which means that this is equal to two times the integral from zero to L of K dQ divided by R. And of course, uh, let's see here, K dQ over R, that would be our dV. And then we can factor out a K we can't factor out the r because, let's see here, uh, that would be a squared plus x squared. So that would be v is equal to 2 times k times the integral from 0 to l of dq, and dq would be lambda sub naught, lambda sub naught dx, divided by r would be the square root of a squared plus x squared. All right, and I guess lambda is also constant. We can take out the lambda as well, and then we simply have to integrate dx over a squared plus x squared. That would be equal to, let's plug, a, let's take out the lambda sub naught, and that would be equal to the natural log of the variable x plus the radical of a squared plus x squared evaluated from 0 to l. Oop, and I'm missing a bracket here. There we go. Okay, I missed a bracket. Okay, now of course k is also 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught, so we can make the small change there. Now let's plug in the limits and see what we get. So this would be equal to, that would be uh, lambda sub naught divided by 2 pi epsilon sub naught, because remember that k is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught, so most texts like to put it in that format, so let's do that. Plug in the upper limit. We get, so this will be equal to the natural log. Plug in the upper limit. We get L plus the square root of A squared plus L squared. Minus, when we plug in the lower limit, notice we get 0 there, we get 0 there. The square root of A squared would be simply A times the natural log of A. All right, and that would be the potential at A. So let's go ahead and put a box around that. That's our answer for the potential at A. Now, what do you think will be the potential at B? 
Well, we'll do exactly the same thing, except we're going to have a, a slightly different triangle, but still everything else will be the same. So if we do this triangle right here, we can say that r is equal to the square root of b squared plus x squared. Everything else will be the same. So if we then plug in the potential at b, and so let me make this the potential at a, and so therefore, in a different color, I can write the potential at b. v at b would be equal to the exact same result. It would be lambda sub naught divided by 2 pi epsilon sub naught times the natural log of l plus the square root of b squared plus l squared minus the natural log of a. And so that would be the result if we did the whole thing over again. But in this case, we would be integrating for the point at B. So what would be the potential difference between B and A? Well, potential difference would simply be V at B minus V at A, right? So that's what we have over here. So the potential difference would be equal to V B minus V A. And that would be equal to this quantity right here. So we can factor out a lambda sub naught divided by 2 pi epsilon sub naught times this quantity for b, oh, 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 I need a b there, not an a, that should be b, there we go. So I would get this quantity right here, so it would be the natural log of l plus the square root of b squared plus l squared minus the natural log of b minus, now let's make sure I get this straight, so I put a parentheses there, minus the natural log of b, and maybe like that, minus this quantity right here, which would be the natural log of l plus the square root of a squared plus l squared, minus the minus, so it becomes plus the natural log of a. Let's make sure I got this correct. So it would be the natural log of this minus the natural log of b, which is what I have over here, that's correct minus this quantity right here, so minus that, and minus times and minus gives me a plus, so that's correct. So now notice that I have the natural log of A minus the natural log of B, and then I have this minus that. So I'm going to rewrite this as lambda sub naught divided by 2 pi epsilon sub naught times the quantity, the natural log of A divided by B plus the natural log of this quantity divided by this quantity. So it's going to be um, L plus the square root of B squared plus L squared divided by L plus the square root of A squared plus L squared. And let's put parentheses around that and brackets around that. And that would be the difference in potential going from A to B, not from B to A, but going from A to B. Wow. Okay, now that's an interesting result, because if you watched the previous video where we found the potential difference going from A to B for an infinite line charge, remember what that was? It was equal to this quantity right there. And it didn't have this portion. So this portion is necessary if it's a finite length. Now that means that if we let L go to infinity, this should go to zero. Hmm, that's interesting. Well. Let's try it in our next video. What we're going to do in our next video is we're going to have the same setup. We're going to start with our answer here and see that if we then expand the length of our line charge and then make it infinite, this should go to zero and the end result would be that the potential difference, just like in our previous video, will equal this quantity like that. So let's go find out. Let's do another one more video and shrink that down to uh, L or actually expand it where L becomes infinite and see what happens to that integral.